Hi there, it's Alyssa. I'm here to explain the difference between traditional publishing and self-publishing. Authors take it for granted that everyone knows the difference between the two different types of publishing, but the fact is there are a lot of people out there who have no clue. In fact, there are some authors who have no clue. Back in the day before computers gave us print-on-demand technology, before it was really feasible to read books on a digital screen, just about all the books out there were traditionally published. But advancements in technology, in the way people read books, in the way people purchase books, and even in the way that books are created, has made it financially feasible for authors to self-publish books. Now, self-publishing existed before. There's always examples of famous books, such as Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, that were self-published. But it was a huge undertaking back in the day to self-publish a book, and it couldn't be accomplished at the press of a button, as it can now. The tide has actually changed, and now more books are self-published each year than are traditionally published. The most recent year I could find actual numbers for is 2013, and in 2013, almost half a million, that's right, half a million books were self-published, while traditional publishing only put out just over 300,000 books. That's still a lot of books. Now I should note, I'm using the term self-publishing. But because of certain perceived negative connotations with the term self-publishing, some authors and others in the business prefer the term indie publishing or indie author. You will often hear the term indie author used to describe an author who is self-published. Now this is not to be confused with an indie bookstore, um, which is a bookstore that is not a big chain bookstore, but an independently owned and operated store. The term indie bookstore has nothing to do with the term indie author, and in fact, many indie bookstores are reluctant or unable to stock books by indie authors. But more on that in a bit. A traditional publisher is any sort of publisher that uses some sort of gatekeeping or selection process to determine which books they will select for publication. Normally this is some type of acquisitions editor, um, sometimes assisted by a staff of interns and assistants. Not all books submitted to a traditional publisher are accepted for publication. In fact, the majority of them are rejected. Now with self-publishing, there is no gatekeeper. If you're using a big service like Amazon's Kindle or CreateSpace um, or other self-publishing services or even a smaller indie publishing outfit, there is no sort of gatekeeper, so your book is going to be accepted no matter what. Now, it may be rejected because of formatting or issues with the file, but there is no editorial selection going on. With traditional publishing, when a book is accepted for publication, an author usually receives some sort of advance against royalties. So what this means is that an author who is traditionally published often receives money before they have sold a single copy of their book. In self-publishing, on the other hand, you usually pay money up front to have your book published. Now this might go to cover services like cover design, layout, editing, proofreading, or submitting your book to review publications. If you are unsure whether you are traditionally published or self-published, but did have to pay money up front to have your book published, then you are self-published. Now, speaking of money, self-published authors keep a much larger share of their royalties. So, what you might be wondering is why any author would not want to self-publish their work. Well, there are some benefits to traditional publishing. When you are traditionally published, you do have the backing of an established publisher and their whole team to help your book have success. When you are traditionally published, your publisher handles the submission of your book to review publications and different reviewers. You do not have to do this. There is no fee for this. Your publisher will take care of the design of your cover, the layout of your pages, the typesetting, and all editing and proofreading of your work. But perhaps the biggest advantage to working with a traditional publisher is distribution. So what this means is how people are going to purchase and find your book. Traditional publishers have a sales team. They put out catalogs, and their sales team works with the buyers at both chain bookstores and independent bookstores to help make sure that books get stocked on the shelves and can be found by readers who are browsing for your books. When you are a self-published author, you do not have this distribution in place, 
and in fact many self-published books, the majority of them, cannot be found at traditional bookstores. You can, on your own, try to get bookstores to pick up your book and carry it in their store, but this is a lot of work. Now one of the reasons that bookstores are reluctant to stock books by indie authors is because most books that are self-published use print-on-demand technology to print books. That means that any print copies of your books have been printed one at a time. This usually means that indie books have a higher list price for print books than traditionally published books, which are printed in large runs. And so then the publisher receives a bigger discount on the printing than you do for printing an individual book one at a time. But besides this high cover price, there is another key difference between traditionally published books and self-published books, and that is with traditionally published books, publishers take returns. So, your book gets into bookstores, it sits on the shelf, hopefully people buy it, hopefully a whole lot of people buy it, and there aren't any sitting left on the shelf months later. But the fact remains that not all books will sell in all locations. There are going to be leftover books. And when this happens, bookstores can send these books back to the publisher and get a refund on them. That's right, they're not left with dead inventory. Once your book has been out there in the world, for fiction, probably after six months to one year, uh, the returns start coming in. And so you can receive royalty statements that actually show a negative number of sales. With print-on-demand books, bookstores want to have the same option of being able to return books. Now you can still do this if you're hand-selling copies and you can have the store sell them on consignment. They're probably not going to want to pay up front for them, but if they do, know that you will have to give them a refund. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking nobody shops in bookstores anymore. Most readers are online and that's how they get their books. And this is very true. There are a lot of people who don't even read hard copy books. They just read books on Kindles and Nooks and iPads. Now the problem is you still have to find these readers and reach them. If you are writing a novel and you have a large following, maybe on social media, on a blog, on YouTube, then you may be able to sell a bunch of copies of your book. Then you will have a better chance of having success with your self-published novel. You can also pay to have the book promoted in various venues, to advertise it, and put a lot of money into marketing and hope this will boost sales of your self-published book. Self-published nonfiction can be a little bit easier to make money at because most people looking for information on a particular topic are not as concerned with the author of the book as they are with the content. Um, I'm not talking about memoirs, but something like a how-to book. Anything that's informational in nature might be able to sell itself if the topic is something that people will be searching for. You may also find success with nonfiction books if you've built a platform for yourself as an expert on a particular topic. But fiction is a lot more difficult to move, and it does not sell itself. You really do have to work at selling it. Which is why a lot of authors love traditional publishing, because there's less work involved for them. They rely on their publisher to distribute their book to bookstores, they rely on their publisher to do a lot of marketing and to get reviews of the book in national review publications. Now, if you do strike upon a magic formula to sell a lot of books, then it is to your advantage to be a self-published author because you will make more money on the sale of each book. And once you do become hugely famous, then your books will sell themselves. So I hope this short primer on the difference between traditional and self-publishing has helped to clear up the confusion for those of you who were not sure what the difference between the two was or did not even realize there were two different types of publishing out there. And keep in mind, the publishing world is still changing at a pretty good clip, and a few years from now, things may look very different. My name is Alyssa Grasso. I am an author. I am a traditionally published author. I put out new Awkward Author videos every Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel, giving me a thumbs up, commenting below, or sharing this post with your friends. Thank you everyone, and I'll see you next Tuesday.